Here we have Melinda Johnson and Showboat. And Showboat's a registered Tennessee walking horse. Uh, the Johnsons have two walking horses, Tennessee walking horses, and both of them are conformed to do the gait that they bought the, that the breed is known for, which is the running walk. Um, Showboat's shoulder angle shows that he's going to have moderate reach in front, not a very long reach in front. He's got a very long but a relatively horizontal arm, but he still has plenty of space between these two angles for plenty of lift. He's going to be very scopy, but not going to have a lot of lift. In other words, he's going to have more roll than he's going to have lift. He's not going to be very long strided. He's not going to be very high strided, but he's going to have plenty of roll in his front end, which is uh, something that is nice in a, in a running walk horse. From the point of hip to the point of buttock is a long and quite vertical line. That shows us that showboat has the ability to really drop down nicely and collect up underneath himself and, and, and also to reach. That contributes to the amount of reach because the, the horse's back end is dropped down farther to start so that when they start to swing, they already are farther down, closer to the ground and can allow that hind leg to swing up underneath itself a little bit more. Here we see from the point of buttock to the stifle, he has a very high stifle. He also has exceptionally long hind limbs, which means that he can, because of the high stifle, he can really swing that leg underneath himself. Because of the length of leg, he has a long swing underneath himself. So here we have a horse that can drop down, really reach underneath himself, and swing that leg for a long overstride. Again, we're describing the typical back end of a running walk horse. Here we have the end of the spine and the sacroiliac. This is how, where the horse is coupled. You see there's a significant amount of space between these two spots. That tells me that this horse is very much geared, very much wired toward doing a lateral uh, pace or stepping pace gait. It's a good thing that Showboat is able to drop down and collect up underneath himself for a couple of reasons. One, because he tends to be pacey or stepping pacey, and if he, if he weren't able to collect up very well and carry his weight over his haunches, that would be very, very wearing on his stifle and hocks over a period of time because the horse that is pacing goes uh, with their hind leg out behind them carrying weight for too long in the stride. And over a lifetime of being ridden in a pace or step pace, that just wears uh, a lot of extra wear and tear on the, high, on the stifles and the hocks. And for that reason, horses that are pacey, gated horses are ra rather known for um, having hock and stifle problems. However, if the rider learns how to collect the horse up so that it carries its weight well balanced and it can move well off the, the hind end, then you've got a horse that can function many years longer. They won't have the problems with um, stifles, they won't have arthritis in the hocks and that sort of thing. Since he tends to be pacey, it's exceptionally good idea to get a horse that's, that tends to be pacey to have a long and very dropping croup, dropping hip. The other reason it's a good thing that he's able to carry his weight over his back end is because that allows him to lighten up his front end and get the lift he needs. If he were to go flat out with an arm that's as, as horizontal as this one, with as little lift as he has, if he were not ridden in a nice collected frame, he probably could tend to be quite stumbly because he's simply not lifting the way that uh, a horse with a more vertical arm would lift. But because he has a nice long arm and has lots of roll, he can compensate for la lack of lift, especially be if you get him over his haunches, carrying the weight over his haunches, and lightening up the front end so he can roll that front end around. Um, is he, if you just ride him in a dog walk or something like that, does he tend sometimes to stumble and get a little bit? Not usually. No? OK. And just, I was just curious, because that's, that's one thing you have to sort of watch out for with an arm that's, that's that horizontal. You want to ride the horse, make sure that he's able to collect up, carry his weight over his hind end, so that he can express that role and not get stumbling in the front end. 
We were talking about how scopey, what nice rolling action this horse has in the front end, and that's largely because of the function of the very long arm bone. And we said earlier that you want the arm bone to be at least 60% the length of the shoulder in order for the horse to have a nice rolling, comfortable gait in front. Well, this horse's arm is probably 90% the length of his shoulder. He's uh, one of the scopiest horses that I've seen. And uh, a scopy horse, a horse that can really roll its shoulder, tends to be a very, very smooth ride.